This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is another of our holiday gift guides. This potentially is the last one because of scheduling and uh, just general timing, but we may squeeze in one, maybe even two more, because I have an idea for something extra special a little closer to the holiday. But enough of that. Um, you know the rules here, but I'll just go over them real quick. Uh, everybody gets, we, we do four, three or four rounds. Everybody gets one pick. And they are not allowed to pick anything that previous panels have selected. Um, so for you, you don't need to make any notes because all the products we picked and any appropriate links will be in the show notes to this show, this show, but also in a master list on the Mac Voices blog at macvoices.blog. And also there is a Flipboard magazine being maintained so that you have a little more graphical representation of the picks and you can kind of flip through them the way you probably did uh, as a kid with an old catalog of toys and things. But now the toys are much bigger, better, and more expensive. So with that, uh, let's introduce our panel. First up, Mr. Jeff Gamut. Jeff, welcome. It's great to have you. Chuck, I, I'm so glad that the timing worked out so I could be on one of the holiday shows because this is so much fun every year. It, it would not be a holiday, any of the holiday shows without you, Jeff. So I'm, I'm definitely glad that you were able to make it. It's, it's awesome. To, I, I just love hanging out with, with you and, and everyone else that, that ends up on your gift guides. Yeah, it was, it's always a lot of fun. That's part of the challenge is trying to make sure that, you know, because some people want to be on with somebody else and the schedules don't work, but, you know, then they make new friends and it all, it all works out. It all works so, out. Great to have you. And I decided to invite the only guy I could think of that could probably keep Jeff and, and me in line, oh. Dr. Robert oh. Carter. <laughs> that is asking a lot, man, but I'm sure glad to be here. Hey, it's great to have you, Robert. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. All right, guys. So you you heard the introduction. You know the rules. So let's just get to it. And if it's okay with you, I'll just keep the same order. So, Jeff, you get first pick of round one. Awesome. That means I know for certain at least one thing I picked tonight, no one else has already picked. I'm going to start with the Base Station Apple Watch Edition from Nomad. This is a uh, 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 Qi-compatible wireless charging pad that uh, that will charge your iPhone and it will charge your Apple Watch and it has a little uh, piece that stands up to hold the Apple Watch so that it'll be in in the the nightstand mode and then it has an extra chi charger in it so that Apple is already or so that Nomad is already set for when Apple releases a wireless charging case for AirPods. So you'll be able to charge all three devices simultaneously. And you don't need to provide your own Apple Watch charger puck because it's already built in to the uh, to the base. And it looks really nice. So it's not uh, a white plastic thing. It's, it's this kind of dark gunmetal sort of color with the the pad area where you would where you set your phone it's like this leather piece so it looks really nice and uh, and and it works really well and you don't have to bring any of your own charging equipment to make it work everything you need is right in the box plug it in and just start using it so this this has become my nightstand setup for my iPhone and my Apple Watch. And eventually, once I have a, a wireless charging case for my AirPods, they can charge there too. It's uh, it's $119.95 on the Nomad website. And I'm sorry, I did not check to see if it's available on Amazon for, for a different price. It's okay. We'll figure it out. So this does watch, phone, and eventually the the wireless AirPods case that actually you can buy third-party versions of, of those now, but. Oh, right. So those should work yeah. then. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, if you don't have a wireless charging case for your AirPods, that means you can set your iPhone in two different positions. So it can be going across the, the base or it can lay fully on it. Hmm. And so okay. it can charge in either position. Very nice. Very nice. It's I have to go back and look. I'm not, I th- yeah, we come, yeah, we have had some, some watch picks, um, but everybody comes up with a different charger version of a charger, whether it's Qi or, you know, a different stand or whatever. And I like the idea that this combines everything so that all my Apple gear is, is right there being charged and I know where it is. Yeah, and I like that it doesn't look like some stereotypical piece of tech gear, you know, white plasticky with a, with a, a silver bezel sort of thing. It, it looks really nice. Good. Good pick. Good, good way to get us out of the gate. Robert, what do you have for round one? Well, I'm thinking that I will just be complimentary of Jeff's pick here because without my pick, Jeff's pick wouldn't be all that exciting. So I'm going to go for round one with the Apple Watch Series 4. And I believe this is by far my favorite Apple Watch for a couple of reasons. Of course, the edge to edge screen is nice for everybody because you can get more of those funny little compliments on the screen, right? And, uh, and, and so uh, complications, I should say, on the screen. I guess you get a compliment on there too if you want. But you can get more complications on the screen and you can uh, have a little more options in terms of the kinds of screens that you can have on the watch. And that's really cool. But for me as a voiceover user, it's particularly nice that this Series 4 watch is a good bit louder than the Series 3. It has quite a bit of a louder speaker. And so it's much easier for me to not only hear a phone call if I take one on my watch, but it's much easier for me to hear the voiceover speech, which gives me the information that's on the screen from the watch. So if I'm out and about and in a noisy environment, I can hear the watch much better and also just find it to be I had the series three, which was, which was, which was really nice, but I find the series four to be even a little bit faster and a little less uh, buggy. At least I had a couple things going on um, with the series three, which may not have actually actually been the hardware, it may have been the, the earlier version of the watch OS. But now I just have to say this, this watch is just a really smooth, really nice pick for someone who wants to get into the Apple Watch, I would say, in my opinion, the Series 4, if you haven't done it already, is the time to to jump on it. And why not do it over the holidays? So that's that's my first round pick. I would be hard pressed to argue with you because I am, I'm wearing a Series 4. So, mm-hmm. you know, I love it. Jeff? Uh, are you- I'm wearing a Series 4 also, and I love it. Uh, Robert, I, I have a question for you that's completely not gift related. But I, I'm really curious because you use Apple Watch in a in a very different way than I do, because uh-huh. we both interface with our watches in different ways. Right. How does that that work for you? Uh, adding complications and and using those complications is, is it uh, is it really useful and is it intuitive how it works? Yeah, I think it works pretty much the same way that it does. Uh, for you, I just uh, do a force touch or a hard press, whatever they call it now, on the watch face. And then I have an option that uh, VoiceOver gives me to, to customize the, uh, the watch face. And I can just use the digital crown to scroll through the different options, different complications for that watch face. And VoiceOver reads each one out. And um, when I find the one that I want, I can put it where I want it on the screen. So I, I'm guessing it works in a very similar manner to, to the way that it does for you. That's really cool. You know, I it just is. love that Apple has figured out uh, an effective way to make technology like this accessible Absolutely. to an incredibly wide range of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really took a, a huge leadership role in this area. And uh, one of the one of the coolest things that they did with the Apple Watch is if you have voiceover turned on and you 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 just and your watch is asleep 
and you just do a, a double tap on the screen with one finger, it will vibrate the time using the haptic feedback. So if it's seven, seven o'clock, it'll give you seven vibrations and you'll know it's seven o'clock. And if it, there are minutes and it'll give you the, the vibrations you need for the minutes. And so you can silently and totally discreetly um, check the time. It was kind of funny. I, I, I thought I was being so discreet with it. I didn't realize for a long time though, that when you do this, the watch actually lights up. Um, oh. and so I thought, uh, I'm not being as discreet as I thought I was, but then I realized that it's possible to actually go into a setting uh, in the watch app, uh, under, under accessibility and actually put, do something called turn screen curtain on, which means you can, uh, have the screen not show anything. So now I'm back to stealth mode. Now I can check my time anytime I want, even in a meeting with my boss. And she That's- just thinks I tapped on my watch a couple of times. That is so cool. And, and yeah. now I, I I have learned new uses for my Apple Watch. Yeah. And the other thing that's really great for me as a psychologist that, that really comes in handy is I set an alarm to alert me when I'm at the end of each appointment. And it's a totally discreet vibrating alarm with no sound. So uh, my client doesn't even know that I'm aware that it's time for us to bring it to an end. But I have a way of knowing without disturbing anyone or anything that's going on in the session. So a lot of great uses for the Apple watch for me. That's so cool. Thanks for indulging me, Chuck. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. The the thing about the, all the accessibility functions, whether we're talking watch or phone or whatever, is that there's so many different ways that they can be used for someone that needs them. Like the things Robert's talking about, but also, you can twist those uses and, and use them no matter what your what your capabilities are. So exactly, I, yeah. Thank you, Robert. I mean, I, I admit, I think I I got a couple ideas there. I may steal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap up the first round. I'm going to tell you what to buy and what not to buy. Um, I'm going to suggest that you go out and take advantage of some of the holiday gift card gift card options that are out there. Now, some of these are not necessarily tech, but hey, everybody likes to eat, right? And there are a number of restaurants that are giving you $10 gift cards um, for giving you a free $10 if you buy 50. So if you do the math, that works out to a 20% discount. And who wouldn't like a 20% discount on dinner? Now, I told you I'd tell you what to buy, and I just did. Uh, Places like Carrabba's, Outback, Chili's, um, a Panera Bread, I believe, is doing that, that deal, too, that I've seen. I think, you know, so many of the major chains are. So the, a couple of little gotchas here. The, the first gotcha is that $10 gift card um, has a limited time to be used. The, the ones you buy as the, the regular gift cards, most of them don't have an expiration date, and you can just use them whenever. But those those special discount cards have a, an, an expiration date. Sometimes it's the first two weeks of the year. Sometimes it's the first month of the year. So when you buy these, whether you're gifting them or whether you're going to hang on to those bonus cards for yourself, you want to make sure you, you take a good hard look at it and then mark your calendar with an alert or an, a reminder or whatever that you have to use these gift cards before the end of the uh, the, the period. If you don't, I mean, you know, you still bought the gift card and you got the face value out of it. You just didn't get the bonus. The other thing that I'm going to tell you not to buy is is don't be very careful. I better put it that way. Be very careful if you go to the grocery store or the drugstore and you pick up those Visa or MasterCard branded gift cards because it seems like a great idea to just, hey, here's here's a Visa gift card for 50 bucks and go out and get what you want. The trouble with it is that they charge you a hefty premium for that. So while you may be giving something that is worth 50, it might be costing you 52, 3, 4, 55. So just it is sort of the opposite of the other gift cards, and it, it fascinates me how many people don't even think about this. They just see the gift card from Visa and say, "Oh, okay, great," and they don't realize the premium that they're paying. Um, so if you if you and if you're challenged, I mean, I got to tell you, Amazon gift cards, you can find just about everything on Amazon. So if you really get desperate 
Amazon and they don't charge the extra fee. If you buy a fifty dollar gift card, that's what you pay, and that's what your your loved one will receive. So you know, play with the gift card things that, because over Black Friday, and you still might see some of those happening right now occasionally with flash sales. You know, I said a. a you get ten dollars for fifty. Sometimes, and I took advantage of one of them. You got twenty dollars in gift cards for fifty. Same restrictions apply. I have to use it by a certain part of the year, and um, I maybe only be able to apply so much of that particular bonus card to my bill. But still, it's it's quite the deal. And at the end of the day, if you if you lose them for, or forget it, or you know slip and fall on the ice and break your arm and can't go out you still have not lost any money because the gift card you bought still has its face value. Mm. So a little bit of versatility there, something a little different, but it it surprises me how many people don't think of that and take advantage of some of those things when they love certain restaurants and those deals are there. You guys like to eat, right? I do like to. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. I had my suspicions. (laughs) I like that. Are there any of those restaurants that uh, Jeff can go to where he doesn't have to wear pants, or are they, do, they all, do they all require pants? Um, you I know, think I live in Boulder, so I can I, I can go pants free a, a lot of places w- without getting too many questions. Maybe not this month. No, not this month. It's, okay, it's like, you just, could. It just wouldn't be. Yeah, it's a little too chilly right now. <laughs> All right, Jeff, take us into round two. Okay, my next pick is what it, what is currently my favorite card game, and that's Exploding Kittens. <laughs> it's the, now Exploding Kittens has been around for what a couple of years now, and there's expansion packs that you can get to go along with it, and uh, uh, but. Oh my gosh! What it's an incredibly fun game, and it's it's created by the 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 guy that does the oatmeal, so it, so it's all of his art, and the objective is to play with with other people and strategically use the cards in your hand to uh, to avoid getting an exploding kitten card. And if you get an exploding kitten card and you don't have a diffuse card, then you're out. So it, uh, I mean, that's it. That's, that's the whole game right there. But the strategy that goes along with, with how you're, you're uh, playing the cards that you have, it, it makes it a really fun game. And I found that playing it with, with adults or kids, it's equally fun. Uh, I also found that one of my nieces is absolutely ruthless at this game. And uh, when, when I play her, I have to bring my best game or I'm just going to get j- just slaughtered. <laughs> so uh, the, the basic game it comes in two forms, regular exploding kittens or the NSFW version, which uh, it, it's it's mostly the same cards, but some of the cards might be uh, uh, inappropriate for kids. So I got the the regular version, so I can play it with everyone, and uh, and I and I picked up the imploding kitten expansion pack. Uh, later on, uh, but the basic game, 1999, you get it on Amazon, Exploding Kittens. It's an incredibly fun, wonderful game. When I'm traveling to family events, it's always with me. So, Jeff, I, don't get graphic on me, okay, because this is a family <laughs> show. But you say the, the not safe for work version. Is that um, is that because of adult themes? Is it because of violence or? No, it's it's rudeness that's, okay that's a reasonable way to put it it's okay. it's not pornographic in any way it's it's not uh uh graphically violent in any way uh, uh but it, some of the images are a little more rude and uh and and there's some as i recall 
uh, adult language as well. Got it. Okay, just more curious than anything because you know, with a game like or a name like Exploding Kittens, one has to wonder where that could where that could lead you. Yeah, uh, yeah and well, you know, and when you're talking about the oatmeal, it could lead you anywhere. Yeah, reminded me of the old Johnny Carson Karnak joke. You know the one I mean? Uh, Car- no, Car- I Karnak, uh, Karnak, you know. Picks up the I, card and says, you know, sis, boom, ba," And the answer is, what's the sound made by an exploding sheep? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the funny thing yeah. is, I actually do remember that. Yeah, as soon as you said it, I, I totally remembered it. And Ed McMahon's, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go look it up. It is good. It, it cracked <laughs> even Carson up when he was delivering the line. Robert? Can you beat exploding kittens? No, sir. I'm not even going to try, but I'll do a round two anyway. <laughs> so I've got a wearable here. Um, these are some bows. They're not exactly headphones. They're called sound wear. They sit on your shoulders. I'll hold them up here so you can get a look at them. They, uh, they just, they're just some little Bose speakers that sit on your shoulders, sort of like, I guess this is a 2018 version of the, the boom box, if you will. Uh, but it's a really great sounding boom box. These are for the times when you just want to take a break from, I wear the AirPods, Apple AirPods, many hours every day and uh, listen to all kinds of audio, especially podcasts. But when I really want to hear some great sounding music and I'm tired of wearing the AirPods for a while, these uh, this, this, this Bose Soundware uh, speaker set really comes in nice just because it's very comfortable, just sits on your shoulders and sounds great, sends the, the sound right up to your ears. Of course, other people in the room can hear it to some degree. It's not as quiet as a pair of actual headphones, but it's a lot louder. It's direct. The sound is directed right to the person's ears who's wearing them. And it's got the, the typical Bose sound, which I personally really like. I'm a, a, a pretty big Bose fan, a big fan of audio in general. But anyway, um, these are available right now from Bose. And as are most products from Bose, they are not cheap. Uh, right now they've got them, got them on sale over the holidays for 250 bucks. So, um, uh, if somebody's really into audio, you might enjoy the Bose Soundware. That's round number two for me. Very nice, very nice. They, those, are, that's one of those products that just kind of looks comfortable. Uh huh. It is. It looks like yeah. I want to. I want to kick back and relax. So I'll just put this on and you know mellow out. So mm-hmm. nice pick, nice pick. Shoot, that means I'm up already. Holy cow. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to go with with a timely pick. Um, unfortunately, it's a lo- it's look at it this way. It, I'm picking it because of bad reasons, but I don't want those bad reasons to catch up with you. Uh, it seems like every time we turn on the computer, every time you turn on the morning news or the evening news or the 11 o'clock news, one of the words you hear is breach. There's been a data breach of this. There's been a data breach of that. It, it's 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 a little bit frightening. So I'm going to suggest that you protect yourself a little bit, learn to protect yourself more importantly um, by, by someone who has spent quite a bit of time working this out. Um, I want to recommend three books by Joe Kessel, and I want to make sure I get them right. Mm. Take control of your online privacy, take control of your passwords, and take control of one password. Now, I realize that's three books, and it may be more than you really want to dig into. So I would say start off with take control of one password because that is a password manager I I recommended in a previous session, um, and it'll help you get the most out of it. Then after that, probably take control of your online privacy simply because Joe has all kinds of tips and tricks in there to help you avoid some pitfalls, you know, some best practices for things to do and not to do that will make you less of a target. And then take control of your passwords sort of circles back to the first one, but is a little bit broader. Um, and because unfortunately one password can't solve all your password problems, solves about 99% of them, but there's always that 1%. 
And in take control of one passwords, uh, excuse me, take control of password of your passwords. Joe does a great job of making you just think a little bit about the best way that you can do that. And again, at the end of the day, you know, this is not going to fix everything, but it is going to make you less of a target, less likely that to get hacked or abused than those people who use password as their password or one, two, three, four as their password. And of course, with Take Control Books, you know that Joe has spent an exhaustive amount of time digging into these subjects and and he doesn't give you a lot of, of noise. He just gives you a lot of signal in his writings. So a little, little security uh, gift for the holidays. I like that gift. I love those take control books and they're, they're really, really well done. And anyone who cares about privacy and security could definitely benefit from those three books. I have them and the take control books are great if you just want to read them, but they're also really great if you need a, reference because they've laid them out nicely and you can easily find that particular information that you need when you need it. So good pick. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree, Robert. And yet there, it's not like picking up an encyclopedia, trying to dig no, through and find it. You know, it's, it, they, they keep it to the relevant stuff. This edition of Mac voices is supported by ops Genie by Atlassian. When everything is working, well, everything is working. But when things go wrong, that's when you need to act fast and do the right thing. Time is money, especially when it comes to your service, and that's why Atlassian makes OpsGenie. With OpsGenie, you and your dev and ops teams get the fastest possible notification of problems so that steps can be taken to get things back up and running. But OpsGenie does a lot more than that. You set up who gets notified about what problems and when they get notified. A smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths makes sure that, even if there are time zones or holidays involved, the right members of your team are alerted to problems. You know how frustrated you are when a service you depend on goes down. Even a few minutes of downtime seem interminable at today's speed of business. With OpsGenie on the job, your downtime stands a better chance of being minimal, making your customers happy. And when your customers are happy, you are happy. Incidents occur. Take the sting out of them with OpsGenie. Right now, when you visit OpsGenie.com, you can sign up for a free account and then add up to five team members, all for free. And I don't mean a trial account. I mean an OpsGenie account. See how OpsGenie integrates with apps like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, and more, and what it can do for you. That's OpsGenie.com for a free account and up to five team members, all for free. With OpsGenie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to OpsGenie for their support of Mac Voices. All right, guys, that puts us halfway through. Um, and so now's the time that you start to look at your lists and think, gee, I only have two more picks to go. What am I gonna what am I gonna do? So, Jeff, round three. All right. Well, for, for this one, I actually thought ahead and uh, and brought the product into the studio with me. And this is the iHome iAV5. So this is a portable speaker, but it's more than just a portable speaker because it also looking for Bluetooth signal has a little slot right here where you set an echo dot. Now this works with the the second generation Echo Dot, so the new third generation that has the fabric edges and kind of curved out a little bit on the sides, that won't fit in here. So second generation Echo Dot. So it uh, Bluetooth connects to the Echo, and then uh, it has this nice little light up effect now thing. It to iHome EL5. So it will. Uh, uh, change the colors as uh, as it's playing music, and the speaker sounds nice. So you can you can run it just on the battery, uh, but on the back it has uh, a charging port, of course, and so you can run it plugged in to the the charger, and not have to worry about the battery running out. And the the one thing that threw me at first when I took it out of the package, I thought. Why isn't there a power cord with this? What were they thinking? And then I realized what they were thinking was 
you already have the power cord. It uses the, the power cord that came with your Echo Dot. So you don't need to worry about uh, hunting to find something else. You already have all the pieces you need. And, uh, and it sounds nice. It'll run on the battery for... Um, I, I've left it playing music for like three hours and, uh, and then shut it off. And, and it still had some charge left. So you can use this uh, at a party or uh, uh, car camping, whatever. So you can use it and get a reasonable amount of, uh, of, of playtime out of it before the battery dies. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of nice that, that little uh, color effect. And I wish you could see the color effect really happening, but sadly the camera just isn't picking it up. But it's uh, it's it's nice, deep, rich colors, m- much better than what you're seeing on the camera. So this is uh, fifty nine ninety nine, the IAV five, and uh, it's from iHome. And actually, I'm betting it's probably cheaper than that on Amazon. This is the second iHome device we've had in the sh- in the uh, gift guide this year, and they're all just these. I'm not really quite ready to say quirky, but just very specific use kind of things that people seem to really love that, you know, they, they light up, they make you feel good. They, they maybe, I think the, the other one was an alarm clock um, that your iPhone went into. This is, Oh yeah. That's a really nice one. Yeah. Yeah. So they they do some really cool stuff and I don't think they have really enough credit for what they do. And, and uh, yeah. the, the colors, I have to tell you, I think were coming maybe through, maybe not perfectly, but they were coming through better than you think on the camera. So, oh, okay, great. Oh, and if you want longer battery life, you can turn the the lights off. Oh, okay, got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Sort of like Robert, I would think that with your Apple Watch pick, that if you turn that screen, uh, what 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 was it? Screen cloak. Screen curtain. Screen curtain. That, that probably uh-huh. would improve battery life as well. Uh, they say it, it it may a little bit, but I don't think it improves as much as people think. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure exactly why. Yeah, uh, maybe the way it's way it's maybe just kind of doesn't actually turn the screen off per se, but whites it out or something. I don't know how it works. Yeah, but it does improve battery a bit. Mm. Apple Watch has great battery nowadays, anyway. Yeah. Well, any any time you turn any any of the uh, the LED or OLED or whatever off, just like Jeff was saying, you know, that's that's got to improve the battery life a lot. Yeah, absolutely. But it looks so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just charge it more and enjoy the lights, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Jeff. Very nice pick. Um, Robert, round three. All right. So we were talking about the Apple Watch and about how those of us who use voiceover use the uh, speech synthesizer to speak what's on the screen. But also, in addition to being able to have information spoken on the screen, there's a way to display the same information from your phone or from your computer. You can't do it from your watch, but you can do it from your phone or your computer. You can display that information in Braille on an electronic braille display sorry about the velcro there um and these i'm going to show you this this uh braille display here just so you can see what the device uh looks like um it's just a little portable device and it has a little um display uh that that actually displays one line of braille at a time that's the way uh, most of these work um it's now displaying a line of braille um where it's saying file menu and uh, I could go, go have it go to the next menu and uh, now it's displaying Bluetooth. So you can do some Bluetooth settings there. Um, anyway, the, the point of this is a couple things. Uh, number one, um, it's a way for people to silently get information like uh, text messages or 
if you want to read an email, uh, you could read it on the Braille display, or you can also, it has a keyboard, so you can actually use it as a keyboard for your phone and send, me- send text messages, iMessages, or write a note in notes or do things like that. And that's the reason uh, it, one would want something like this. The problem for the last 40 years has been that these uh, Braille displays, because of the way they're built, the technology they use, which is a piezo technology, um, they've they've had to build them by hand, and so they charge very high prices for them. But this particular display that I just showed you uh, is is a brand new design, a brand new way of displaying Braille. And instead of using the Piazza technology, a man from India came up with a, a way to use tiny, tiny magnets to display and retract all these little dots on this display. And it's a little, um, it, it, it's brand new technology. I'm experimenting with, with a couple of these different displays. And the real advantage that they have is as opposed to costing around somewhere between three and $5,000, you can get one of these for, for around $500. So it's really great how they've come down in price. And again, we've got a, a ways to go until this technology really becomes available to everyone who needs it. But we're certainly moving in the right direction. If we can, after 40 years of paying these exorbitant prices, begin to reduce the price of it. So there, you may be, there may be someone out there uh, watching Mac Voices who uh, it needs one or knows uh, someone who's blind who could maybe benefit from one of these uh, displays. This, this one that I showed is called a Braille Me, and it's available from a company in uh, Boston, Massachusetts called the National Braille Press. They're the distributors here in the U.S., and it was uh, created in, in India. So that's my round three pick. Robert, that's very cool. And I know you and I had some conversations when we first met at uh, MaxDoc about how expensive the Braille readers were. And yeah. So the, the idea that this is so much more affordable, and, and I assume it runs on, on a battery. So what kind of battery life does something like that have? Oh, they get a, a, this one, I think, is supposed to get about 10, 12 hours of battery life between wow. charges. Some of them get longer than that, but certainly you could easily make it through a di- couple of days probably. Uh, you're not going to use it. 12 hours a day uh, because we can probably make it through a couple days. And uh, it seems to be pretty good technology. Um, I just got this one. There's another one that uses a different type of technology that's just uh, come out that I'm going to be testing also. I'm going to do a, a tech doctor series on the new, the, the new Braille, because I think it's a very exciting breakthrough. And unfortunately too many blind people these days don't know Braille because it's been so expensive as part of the reason also, people have stopped teaching it as much, but I really argue strongly that if you don't know Braille and you're blind, you don't have a language. Like you, you're not literate, in my opinion, because you don't know, you don't see how things are spelled and punctuated. And uh, here, having your computer talk to you is great, but it, to me, it isn't a substitute for a written language. So I'm all about promoting Braille these days. So I, I just wanted to share that one. No, it's a, that's a great, phenomenal pick. It could make a huge difference in someone's life. Really good. Thank you. Um, Okay, so my third round pick. Um, So first of all, I'm going to make a little disclaimer here that this this organization has been um, a sponsor of Mac Voices. They are not a current sponsor of Mac Voices. That's not why I'm picking them. I'm picking them because I really do love and believe believe in the product, product. This is the year that you can help or you can give someone the ability to make their own website. And when they are going to make their website, I'm going to encourage you to have them make it with Squarespace. Squarespace, uh, quick story, I had the need um, to build a website this year, not for myself, but for a business. And it was suggested that, okay, here's a contractor that could do it for you. And they could do it for yeah, $5,000, $7,000. And I said, well, that's just kind of crazy because I've been using Squarespace for years now to do the Mac Voices blog. And so I put together their website in about, oh, two or three days. And I think we spent a grand total of um, about $350. And that included some stock photography to to, to spruce it up. Um, Squarespace will take you just a little while to understand the metaphors. Once you do, though, 
the website comes together so fast and so easily. And honestly, it's so much fun to go in and, and, and build it. And that's, I mean, that's it. They provide the hosting. If you buy the, the annual package, you will get the domain name. You don't even have to go to a registrar to get it. Um, they provide the updates. They keep the site up and running. Um, there are just so many great things to say about Squarespace. So if you decide that you want that, sure, you can go out. And, and I use WordPress for the Mac Voices site, and there's nothing wrong with WordPress. Um, but WordPress runs an awful lot of the web, and therefore that makes it a big target for the hackers and the the breachers and the abusers of these things. And Squarespace takes care of all of that behind the scenes, so you never have to worry about that. So if you if you want something that you really need pixel by pixel control, you probably want something like WordPress. But if you're looking for something that you don't mind accepting just a very, very few limitations, and when I say few, I mean few, um, Squarespace is the way to go. So go go check them out. I don't think you will be disappointed. You can sign up and start to build the website for free uh, for two weeks before you have to pay anything. Um, and so you can kind of experiment, see if you like what's coming out, see if you think it's for you. But if you spend two weeks, the odds are that if you pay any attention at all during that two weeks, you're going to have a pretty fully functional website ready to go when the two weeks are up. So a website for Christmas. Good plan. Thank you. Okay, so this is the fourth and final round. So I've have you saved the best for last or are you still torn, gentlemen? We shall see. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jeff has an evil grin on that that's uh no, I just have so many things on my list. Um it, it was hard to pick one, just one, but it's okay. I, I figured it out. Okay. So uh uh, most people are familiar with American Gods because it, it was uh, or is uh, a TV series, and uh, season one has wrapped up, and it's also a book that Neil Gaiman wrote, and the book is absolutely fantastic. So there are multiple ways that you can present this story and have it very compelling. And so Neil Gaiman has partnered with some people and is turning it into a graphic novel as well. So volume one of American Gods, the graphic novel is available now and it's hardback and it is beautiful. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. The, the artwork is wonderful. And uh, um, the, the story, it follows at least so far, the the book as opposed to the TV series, and uh, and there will be multiple volumes because it's it's a long story, so it'll it'll take a while. Uh, I think it's going to be three when it's done, but I'm not certain. But volume one is out right now, and you can pick it up on Amazon for eighteen dollars and thirty five cents, and for for a um, uh. A product like this, a hardbound, full color, it's it's uh, it's pretty big. The price point that Amazon has is like like crazy good. I think this is like a thirty five or forty dollar book if you go and pick it up in a bookstore. Mm-hmm. But it's it's absolutely wonderful. So if you know someone that that is interested in American Gods. Uh, regardless of whether or not they've read it already or seen the TV series, this is a, a, a really great book to pick up. So I heard the last part you said, Jeff. My question would be, if you had someone who was a complete novice, where would you suggest they go first? Should they read the book first? or should I mean, I know the, uh, the full novel uh, graphic novelization is not out yet, but do you think it's better to get introduced that way to it? I think it depends on on the preference of the person that's receiving it. If you're someone that really loves to to have that visual to go along with the story, the graphic novel is a wonderful way to get into it. You'll have to be patient because 
you won't be able to read the entire story all at once. Uh, so if you're someone that really wants to be able to get through the whole story and not have to wait, then the, the book is the way to go as opposed to the graphic novel. But uh, yeah, the, it's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I'm, I've read the book. I've watched season one of the TV series and I'm loving the graphic novel. Pretty much anything Neil Gaiman does, you need to pay attention to. I mean, maybe not everything yeah. is for you, but he does such high quality work that he does. Great pick. Great pick. Okay, Robert, finish big for us. Okay, I'm gonna don't know how big it's gonna be, but and uh, I'm gonna go with one more pair of headphones here. I promise I do not work for Bose, but this is another Bose set of wireless earbuds. Um, they're called the Bose Sound Sport. I'll take one out of the case here and uh, uh, just uh, sh it's just a little earbud. I guess you could say that these are kind of the uh, competitors in some ways to the Apple AirPods. I have them because I have a couple different audiobook reading devices, and I, I like keeping my AirPods available with my Apple products, and it's more convenient to have another Bluetooth uh, s set of uh, earbuds for other devices. And these uh, these SoundSport uh, Bose uh earbuds are I, f I found them to be quite comfortable not quite as comfortable as the airpods uh they're a little bigger so you have a little more kind of uh resting in your ear or sticking out of your ear but they're quite comfortable they fit snugly they stay in place i often will uh, do my pilates uh, exercise routines with um these bose earbuds in they sound really great for music or for spoken audio. I listen to a lot of books and a lot of podcasts with them. So uh, those are the Bose Sound Sport. And if you're interested in them, you can find them just about anywhere. And I believe they sell for around $200. Um, so that's my round four pick. Very nice. You aren't the only one that likes some of the, a lot of the Bose products. I, I think that the Quiet Comfort 25s and 35s both are on the list this year. Yeah. So they, it, it, Bose just seems to be dominating in headphones mm -hmm. um, and other things. So good pick. Good pick. Geez, uh, is it my turn already? Holy cow. <laughs> um, okay, so... I'm going to go. I've been sort of saving this one because I guarantee you nobody else in any of the gift guides will have, have picked this. We talk a lot about tech here and there, but there are a lot of different kinds of tech. Um, and so I'm going to, to, to point you to something I bought this year um, that involves my favorite sport, golf. Uh, and I know, I know, but I know we have some golfers out there because people have commented on, you know, when we mentioned the sport. Um, and if you think golf is not technology heavy, you are crazy because the technology over the past 15, 20 years has just done amazing things with the game. Um, I have, I'm not one of those that just goes and buys every new set of clubs that comes out because most of the time I just, it doesn't make that big a difference. But this year, I bought, I started out with a set of new woods um, from Zexio. They're a Cleveland golf brand. Um, and I could not believe what a difference they make. Now, these are not inexpensive golf clubs, so you're probably not going to find them at Dick's or any, anyone like that. Um, these, are, it's a, it, it, they originated in Japan. Um, these are hand rolled Japanese shafts. They're, they have faces made of airplane grade titanium. Um, but they, they hit so well, but best of all, and the golfers will understand what I mean. They feel so good. You can't believe it. After two months, I went and bought a set of the irons as well. I went for the seal shafted irons, um, not the composites because I've grown up with steel and it just feels better to me, but same thing, the engineering and the technology in these things is just amazing. And I have enjoyed playing golf more this year just because of the sheer feel of these clubs than any other year. They Have they helped my game? Well, you know, 
That's yes, amazing. yes, Chuck, they have. <laughs> have they? Okay, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, thanks for helping me justify it. Mm. Um, so if, if you are a golfer and you get the chance before you buy any more clubs, find a dealer or find a pro shop or find somewhere that handles Zexio and give these a try because I think it will make a huge difference in your game and in your enjoyment of the game. And you guys don't play golf, I know, so that's okay. No, but the way your eyes lit up, it sounds like these are pretty awesome clubs. Sure does. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, they they are. They are. I I I I can't remember the last time I was excited over clubs like this. Um, and so, and and again, I know there's some folks out there that will pay attention to that and at least give a, give them a look. But I definitely wanted to give them a plug because it, it's it's been one of the best things I've bought this year probably in, in the last five, seven, ten years, as far as my golf game goes. So so with that, I think that's a pretty diverse set of picks. Are we, we're all over the place. Of course we were. I mean, look yeah. at us, Chuck. <laughs> we bring variety. Why not? We do. We do. So as always, I want to make sure folks know where they can find you so they can follow up uh, if they have questions about your picks or just want to ask why or why not. So Jeff, what are you up to right now? Well, now that I'm Smiles Text Expander Evangelist, you can find me over at textexpander.com. And um, uh, also Twitter and Instagram, I'm Jay Gamut. And, uh, and right now I'm in the middle of my annual Lego advent calendar, uh, series. Uh, each day I do whatever the build is from the Lego advent calendar and include my own little perspective. So it's, I'm not, I've seen your posts, Jeff, but I'm not familiar is like the Lego advent calendar, a, a thing and then you riff on it or is it's, it just completely your creation? Oh no, the, the Lego advent calendar is totally a thing. And uh, you, you, you can pick from a couple different versions. Uh, so sometimes I get the star Wars version. Sometimes I get the, just the regular one this year. I have the regular one. And so I, I do the build each day and then, uh, uh, just add my own little commentary for it. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for making the time to do this. Oh, it's so much fun to be on. So thanks for having me. We'll do it again. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Robert, I think I know where they can still find you, but you better let them know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I do a podcast called the tech doctor podcast and we, along with my co-host Allison Hartley, uh, do a lot of uh, talking and explaining and teaching about uh, especially Apple uh, accessibility, but we're going to be diving into these new, less expensive uh, Braille displays during probably January and February. Um, so for people who have an interest in in learning the ins and outs of what's available along those lines, but mostly we we stick to uh, what's going on with Apple and, and with a, an accessibility uh, bent to it, I guess, but we also cover the main events, the WWDC keynotes and the fall uh, keynote, of course, and things like that. So anyway, that's at dr-carter.com is the website. And I'm Robert underscore Carter on Twitter, not on there as much as I used to be, but still, still uh, check into it. So that's where I'm at. And that's kind of what we're about. And like, uh, Jeff said, and like you said, Chuck, I want to wish everybody happy holidays. It's nice that they're finally here. I'm ready for a break. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Happy holidays to you, too. And thanks so much for being here. It's always a pleasure. You're welcome. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Again, we will be bringing you, hopefully, at least one, maybe two more gift guides. Maybe not. We just never know. Trying to get everybody scheduled together around the holidays is a challenge. But when it works, it's so much fun that we just want to keep doing it and doing it. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, 
consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.